Pachera Talks. My name is Arun and I'm Solutions Architect with Rackspace. And today we are going to talk about design a data integration solution with Azure Data Factory. So let's get started. The very first thing we need to do is understand the ADF in a big picture. So let's try to put it in the perspective. In the world of big data, we have various kinds of uh, data like structured, unstructured, same structure, or you can, you can say raw or unorganized data, which often stored in respective data store like relational, uh, non-relational or other storage systems. However, on its own, raw data doesn't have the proper context or meaning meaning to provide a meaningful insight to analyst, data scientist, or business decision makers. So big data requires a service that can orchestrate and operationalize processes to refine these uh, enormous stores of raw data into actionable business insights. Well, you must be getting where I'm leading this right so well this was the introduction building for azure data factory yes azure data factory is the answer azure data factory is a, a managed cloud service that's built for these complex etl or elt etl is extract transform load and elt is extract load transform we had a, a great discussion in other videos. If you check the playlist, you'll, you'll find those. So yes, ADF is the answer for this question that we raise, how to get the insights from the raw or unorganized big data. So if we have to define ADF or Azure Data Factory, we could simply define it as a cloud-based ETL and data integration service that can help you create and schedule data-driven workflow, which also called pipelines that can ingest data from various data stores. Or you could say ADF is a data orchestration tool, which could be utilized for data ingestion, transform and load through data flows or pipelines. So, that's the understanding of Azure Data Factory. And now we need to understand where we can use this or what are the usage for ADF for Azure Data Factory. Well, as you can see, we can utilize ADF to orchestrate data movement or to transform data at scale. But how actually we do that that's the question and to answer this question we need to understand key components so pipeline as you can see pipeline is the crucial important component we have mentioned it a few times at the beginning so a data factory might have one or more pipelines you must be wondering what are those well the pipeline is a logical grouping of activities that performs a unit of work. It could be like copy or schedule or manage, things like that. That's a unit of, a unit of work. So together, the activities in a pipeline perform a task. For example, a pipeline can contain a group of activities that ingest data from an Azure blob copy and then runs a hive query on an HD inside cluster to partition the data. So these are like two activities put together in the pipeline. The benefit of this is that the pipeline allows you to manage the activities as a set instead of managing each one individually orchestration. The activities in a pipeline can be chained together to operate sequentially they can operate independently in parallel. 
so i have used couple of time activity right so activities represent a processing step in a pipeline for example you might use a copy activity to copy data from one data store to another data store similarly you might use hive activity which runs a hive query on azure data uh, inside cluster to transform or analyze your uh, data data factory supports three types of activities data movement ingestion or you know export data transformation with the help of other services that we have mentioned and control activities now the very important thing is data set well as the name says data set represents data structures within uh, data stores which simply point to or reference the data you want to use in your activities as inputs or outputs. For example, you could use asterisk.txt, like star.txt, or any other data sets. Yeah, tables, files, those things we have mentioned here. Well, these, design, uh, these uh, graphics I have borrowed from Microsoft documentation, you can see there. Then we have linked service. Linked service, as the name says, are much like connection strings, which define the connection information that's needed for data factory to connect to external resources. Because for example, if you're copying data, you need source and destination. And how would you hook up with source and destination through connection string or linked services? So think, uh, think of this, think of it this way, a linked service defines the connection to the data source and a data set represents the structure of the data. As I said, .txt, for example, an Azure storage linked service specifies a connection string to connect to the Azure storage account. Additionally, an Azure blob data set specifies the blob container and the folder that contains the data, right? Now it makes all sense, right? But to, operate all these activities, all this pipeline and, and, and everything, we need something like a runtime. So in data factory, an activity defines the action to be performed. A linked service defines a target data store or a compute service. An, int an integration runtime provides the bridge between the activity and the linked services. It's referenced by the linked service or activity and provides the compute environment where the activity either runs on or gets dispatched from. This way the activity can be performed in the region closest possible to the target data store or compute service in the most performant way while meeting security and compliance needs. You see how every all the components are hooking up together, how things are getting fixed. It's a wonderful example of orchestration. That's how you're orchestrating the entire uh, pipeline with these activities in place. But of course, you need triggers like when the pipeline will start. So you, you do have trigger as a component. Trigger represents the unit of processing that determines when a pipeline execution needs to be kicked off. There are different types of triggers or different types of events like event trigger or, or, or schedule trigger, things like that. All right, so uh, this is all about the key components we talked about. And if you follow it, you can see pipelines. It's a logical group of activity, uh, which runs on web, LinkedIn services, and data sets are the data structure, which consumes by the activity for copying and paste. So this is, this is the whole structure that we talked about. Now, what's next? Next, we have a data-driven workflow. It's a wonderful example. So what we are trying to achieve with this workflow is the utilization of the ADF to perform the end-to-end -end activity. So there are four major steps in creating and implementing a data-driven workflow in Azure Data Factory, uh, which starts with collect and, sorry, connect and collect, because you cannot collect without connecting. So connect and collect is the uh, first step for the data-driven workflow. Data ingestion. Data ingestion is the first step uh, to collecting all the data from different sources to a centralized location. In our case, it's a storage, blob storage. It could be data lake. Uh, then transform and 
enrich like enriching the data so that we can have some insights so now you will use a compute service like azure uh data breaks or azure analytical services azure hd inside how to transform the data which would be which would fall under the snaps now now we do have a wonderful video on azure synapse like a couple of videos on azure synapse where we try to decipher this wonderful tool now the beauty is this adf also support uh, ci cd Support for CI/CD through uh, GitHub or Azure DevOps enables to deliver your ETL process incrementally before publishing the data to the analytics engine, right? Because you need not to transform entire data available, but you can only transform that you need. That's why incremental, utilize the CI/CD, put it there. And the fourth thing is monitor. As usual, we need to monitor through the Azure portal. You can monitor the pipeline for schedule activities and for any failures. It is there on the portal. Now, uh, as I have already mentioned, this, this graphic shows ADF orchestrating the ingestion of data from different data sources. Here it says external data or on-premises network through data is ingested through the uh, into the storage blob stored in azure synapse analytics when we create this we also need a storage account and there is a visualization component are also located in azure data factory azure data factory provides a common management interface for all the data integration needs on a single pane all right now i'm pretty sure this would give you a uh, great understanding of ADF now we understood uh, what is ADF we try to understand und uh, understood uh, the key components of the ADF then we and we, we followed the uh, how we can utilize those components and the data driven workflow and now it's time to check a couple of features so these are the wonderful features which will help you to uh, select ADF over the requirement. So the very first is requirement of data integration. Azure Data Factory serves two, two communities. If you see a uh, big data community that we try to explain with, like understanding of ADF at the very beginning, and the relational data warehousing community that uses SSIS or SQL Server Integration Service. Depending on your organization's data needs, you would set a pipeline in the cloud using Azure Data Factory that can access data from both cloud and on-premises data services. Now, low code and no code. So if you prefer a graphical interface to set a pipeline, ADF is your man. It is a tool where, which you could definitely go and hook up like workflows, like in, uh, in logic apps. So Azure Data Factory provides a low code and no code processes for working with data sources. The beauty is multiple data sources. Azure Data Factory supports 90 plus connectors to integrate with uh, various data sources. So you need not to build anything new or customize anything. Uh, most of the data sources connectors are already available and it is keep on uh, increasing. And another Wonderful advantage is serverless infrastructure. There are uh, advantages in using fully managed serverless solution for data integration, no need to maintain, configure, or deploy servers, and the ability to scale with fluctuating workloads. We all know the beauty of serverless scalability and things like that. So yes, it has that feature too. Now at the end, if you have any comment, queries, and questions, please uh, please comment. I'll thank you for watching. If you like it, please like it, share, and subscribe for the upcoming videos.